I am here to discuss being young at any age. Since 2018, they've been teaching us to practice personal medicine, introducing pro-aging technologies for individuals who will create a revolution for evolution. I'm joined by George Bentley. Thank you so much again, George. Thank you, Gary. Let's start off a little bit about yourself again. We're talking about an entrepreneur, business owner, author, speaker, upcoming podcast host, um, aging specialist, consumer advocate. Your background way back in the beginning was that of law. Um, basically, a chapter started for you from a, a personal story. You have you studied in many great, um, many great universities. We're talking about Harvard. I want you to go back for me a little bit and, and tell me, not the beginning chapter, because the first chapter began with your mother and father. Right. And really, I think the second chapter ends with your mother and father. <laughs> And you're now getting ready to start <laughs> this next chapter, which is really circle of life, right? <laughs> and revolutionizing your life once again, right? Right. Tell me about that. Well, I mean, I uh, just lived my parents getting older and 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 dying, yeah. and I I actually was actively involved because my mother injured herself, and that injury put her health at risk and then the healthcare system actually failed my mother it wasn't the injury that she had it was all the adverse drug reactions and uh, infections and all that and we ended up losing her in a nursing home my mother fell and hurt herself on my parents 59th wedding anniversary my mother was healthy as a horse you've heard me joke about this i called her nana schwarzenegger she literally worked out five days a week and I like to joke and say that's not the only reason I called her Nana Schwarzenegger. She <laughs> spoke in a weird accent and she wanted to marry a Kennedy. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, she was healthy, right? Okay. And that injury changed everything. And okay. it wasn't the injury, it was adverse drug reactions, infections, just go, you go down the list. And I found out that these, these iatrogenic conditions are killing more people in the United States today than cancer or yeah or a heart disease, I mean, just the American Medical Association, because any healthcare therapy that causes us a problem is an iatrogenic condition. So adverse drug reactions, infections in the hospital, um, wrong prescriptions, uh, amputation of the wrong leg, um, you know, whatever it is, these things set up the problems that are shortening lives. And I wasn't able to help my mom. My mom actually passed the day before my parents' 60th wedding wedding anniversary. So it was almost exactly a year to the day from going from Nana Schwarzenegger yeah. to not being here. And when my mom came home from the hospital, instead of being two days, they said she'll be home in two days, it was eight weeks. And when my mom came home, she had an adverse drug reaction that caused a stroke, and she was no longer Nana Schwarzenegger. In fact, she wasn't even Nana anymore. She was angry, mean, she had lost her cognitive ability. My poor sweet dad became the primary caregiver. And my sister and I thought the stress was gonna kill him. And he did his best to take care of her until we got to about the ninth month. And at that point, I, we're going, he, he's gonna hurt himself. He's talking about I, hurt, I nearly hurt my back, trying to get her out of the bathtub, I can't bathe her, whatever. and I'm trying to find people to help us. And the, and the best advice I could get was from caregiving companies, and they basically said, and this is rural Arkansas, so there weren't, weren't a lot of choices, but you know, the bottom line was if, if your father can't safely get her in and out of the bathtub, we're not, our caregivers will be at risk too. So she needs to go into a nursing home. That's what they're there for, right? Yeah. What do I know? I'm thinking, okay, fine, and we put her in a nursing home. And I'm telling you, Gary, my mother begged my father three times every day, get me out of here. My parents were living in the home my mother was born in. My sister and I were raised in that house after my grandparents died. I grew up, listen to this, I grew up with my mother saying to me as a kid, I was born in this house, I'm gonna die in this house. And when, you know, when I'm a kid, right, I'm like, oh, my mom's weird, <laughs> you know, yeah. and she speaks in that Austrian accent. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't think much of it. And when my mom died that day, my phone rang and I pick it up and it's my father. And I keep getting choked up telling these stories. But my father says to me, we let your mother down. She passed away. 
And I said, what do you mean? She died in a nursing home. You know she wanted to be at home in her own bed. And all of a sudden, all those memories, right, came burning back into my brain again. And I'm going, oh my God, we really did let her down. So at that point, my dad, now there's a juxtaposition. I talk about it as a tale of two seniors. Mom healthy, hurts herself, gone in a year, right? Dad was unhealthy when my mom fell. My dad was on seven prescription medications. He had a condition called polyomyalgia rheumatica. He'd been taking prednisone, a steroid, for almost seven years. A hideous chemical to put in your body. But they, they didn't know anything else to do for him. Sure. Restless, restless legs, sleep disruption. And at 82, he started drinking again. So my sister and I are like, oh my God, dad is on his way out, right? Just not good. Mom was the healthy one. He rallied to try to take care of her until she passed. But when he experienced what she went through in the nursing home, mm -hmm. he's like, George, I'll never go into a nursing home and I want you to help me. That's where this all started. It really yeah. started right there. I need you to help me. I'm like, I got it, Dad. You know, after what we experienced with Mom, I got it. So my little curious George <laughs> starts kicking in and I start, to, okay, how am I going to help my dad? Yep. At that point, my dad flipped a switch in his head and he said, I need to be proactive if I'm going to live a health, healthy, natural That's life, good. right? And he started. So he was my little poster yeah. child, a guinea pig, I experienced, but I'm sitting there trying to help dad figure out how to stay healthy and vibrant. And he made it to 102. That's excellent. I mean, that's why you say this, that company found you. You weren't looking for it. I mean, basically, it placed you in an industry where research took place for you year in and year out, hour after hour, helping the aging. Well, now you're aging. Yeah. <laughs> now we're Well, thank aging. you very much. <laughs> right? Well, you I know mean, what? That's something, you know, people don't, th baby boomers like me in particular, we don't like to think about it. But the fact of the matter is, every day I get a day older. And the, every time I ride this rock around the sun, guess what? I'm a year older, right? I was born in the early 50s. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and I know that if I start making decisions now, I have a little segment I do on, on Facebook and YouTube. I call it Kiss and Tell. Keep mm -hmm. it simple, silly, and mm -hmm. tell somebody else about it. But I try to break all these technologies and, and expert information in these different areas of our life I try to break it down and simplify it so even a, you know, a dumb old boy like me and my dad, we can understand it and we can act on it so that we can actually make some baby step changes. They don't have to be huge, sure. right? And I've categorized all this information to try to make it simpler for people to understand so that they can act. And you mentioned one of my favorite terms, pro-aging. I see all this crap and advertising and everywhere you look, anti-aging, okay. anti-aging. And I'm like, how can you be against aging, <laughs> right? Remember, right. every day I get a day older, so the idea is pro-aging. Not, not that I want to be de decrepit and in pain, or whatever, but I want to be proactive in my aging process, and if I do that, then I know that I can control, and I can do what my father did. My father made it to 102, independent the entire time, never had a caregiver living with him, bathed himself, fed himself, lived on his own. We, we had to take his car away at 99, and we did use technology. Yeah. My dad had a heart valve replacement. You know, there, we consumed technology, but he was staying healthy and independent the entire time. Speaking of technology, in your research throughout the years, you've stumbled upon, uncovered um, some some amazing technologies, obviously helping the aging, but really these, are, these can help anyone. After all, we're all aging every day, like you said, from birth, really. Right. Is technology alive and well? Um, do you see more of it? Does it still excite you? Or have we seen it all? Oh, good grief. <laughs> we haven't even begun to see. And, and so I can just say some things to people and you can go dig into it if you want to. Pharmacogenetics personalized or individualized medicine, nanotechnology, 
pharmacogenetics is a DNA test. We, we lose more people through adverse drug reactions and we are injuring our bodies because we, in this country we have decided we're going to rely on pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And, and pharmaco does that to us, right? They're selling us and they tell, I tell people, listen to the commercials. Listen to the commercials. I developed this natural technology, medical hydrotherapy. 100% of my customers, every single one of them has a prescription from their doctor for that therapy. Why? Because it is medically appropriate. It's medically appropriate no matter you're six years old or 106 years old. So they'll prescribe it. Why did I do that? Every pharmaceutical commercial you listen to, at the end, it's going to tell you all the ways it's going to kill you, maim you, shorten your legs, do, you know, whatever. <laughs> Nasty <laughs> stuff, right? And they'll say at the end, ask your doctor if blah, blah, blah is right for you. And I'm a lawyer, right? And I'm going, hmm, these pharmaceutical companies don't do anything without a reason. So I researched it. And there's a medical ethical um, standard that if I'm a healthcare provider, I'm a doctor, and my patient, and maybe you have high blood pressure, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about prescribing whatever, right. and my patient comes in and says, well, hey, George, what about this? I have to have independent medical evidence to the contrary, or there's a presumption, I say, oh, well, okay, fine, we'll use that instead of this, and they'll prescribe the other medication, right? Yeah. So I'm going, if you go in and ask your doctor, they're, <laughs> they're going to prescribe it for you. Prescribe. And it doesn't make anything free, but it does mean investments can be medical expenses for tax purposes. We don't necessarily have to charge sales. There, you know, there are some, some benefits to it, but the main thing is my customer can't ever look at me and question whether this is medically appropriate for them. And I've got a psychological leverage going because I can say, you know, your doctor prescribed this. Yeah. Here's the reason why. Let me ask you this, you've helped thousands of lives, really from a product showroom in Denver, Colorado since 2003, um, over the past nearly two decades. Now you're moving beyond the limit of these four walls. Um, you're taking to the airwaves to share. Why, why do you think radio, vlogging, podcast, is this something that, that excites you that you're able to share this in, in such a mass way? Oh, absolutely. I... I think, you know, t again, technology, the parent company is Bentley Wellness Technologies, and, and we have this huge mass of technology. We kind of got off of that coming down the pipeline. Um, th there's a gentleman by the name of Peter Diamandis that I follow. Very, I'm, I don't have all the knowledge and expertise, okay? I don't. Right. I'm just, I'm a guy of curious George. I ask why, 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 why? There are people that I, I follow and listen to who are way smarter than me about it. And Peter Diamandis is, is a, a gentleman that's, it's, he's on the front edge of looking at new technologies coming, whether it's robotics, nanomedicine, whatever it is. And those types of thinkers can create an awful lot of food for thought, right? To think about why, why this, why that. So we've got amazing technologies coming down the road. And, and my dad made it to 102. Yeah. All four of my grandparents died in their 60s. I'm older now by at least five years than any of my grandparents. Huh. I've outlived all my grandparents. And I know that if I die before the age of 122, and this is true for you too, you died a premature death. Because we know our body is genetically engineered to make it to at least 122 because Jean, Jean Clement lived to be, she's the oldest documented person to, and she lived to be 122. Yeah. And then we've got quite a few people walking the planet right now that are going to exceed that. But why do we not have a life expectancy of 122? Why is it dropping? I'm a great grandfather. My great grandchildren have a shorter life expectancy than you and me. Wow. Since the dawn of human life on this earth, however you think we got here, mm -hmm. <laughs> since we stood up and we're here, every generation has had a longer life expectancy than the one before it, except for a couple of blips yeah. during the Civil War and may, COVID may, may be impacting yeah, that, right. right? But we've had a longer life expectancy until when? Until now. And the reason that we don't is because of what we're doing to our bodies. Yep. It's what we're doing to our bodies. 
I mean, you've been, you've been nationally recognized um, through seminars you're able to provide for people. You're able to inform the public more in mass when you get out there with the people. Do you enjoy the human interaction of almost interviewing people, asking them questions, learning from the guests, uh, maybe sometimes more than, in your, than what you read in your research? Sure. Do you I enjoy do. that? I do. I love it. And what I really love, one of the best technologies we've got happening now is technology like this. Yeah. I can use video, I can use the internet, I can use Facebook, I can use YouTube. There are so many, podcasts, there are so many different ways that we can get information out. And here's the key to me. The key is, it's, I don't get excited. Well, I do kind of, <laughs> I do get, I get a little excited. But it's not really all about me right. giving information to other people. It's about people asking questions, yep. people sharing experiences, people going, I had this condition and I treated it this way naturally. And, and, and I want to be like a gateway. I want to help people connect. I want to, I, I call it my inner circle. Mm -hmm. There are resources that I go to and I'm always looking for more knowledge, expertise. Whether, whether it be law or the founding of Bentley Baths, wellness technology, you never stopped asking questions. I mean, can we direct and influence the path of our health and quality of life as we age? What is that answer for you? Well, d always ask the question, why? Anytime a do anybody tells you anything, you should be going, why? Right now, if you're listening to this, you yeah. should be going, why is George saying this stuff to me? Why, is, why does he care so much about this? And if I can find the answers for myself, then, then I have done society and my family a huge favor. My dad made it to 102, like I said, and, and my family was blessed to experience that. And we can all do that, but we have to start taking steps. Otherwise, life is an A-B game, right? There's a date you enter this life, yeah. and there's a date you exit. If it's an A-B game, I'm going to have those two dates, right? It's going to be on my tombstone or somewhere, yep. right? Yep. And I don't do anything. I just keep doing what I'm doing, talking about life expectancies. I, my, my B date is going, to, it's going to be there. Maybe in a 10 years, 15 years, I don't know. It's going to be there. But if I start today, and I do one thing today to help myself age more healthily, just one thing, I might extend that a week. I start doing more things, maybe I add another year, maybe I add another decade to my life, sure. right? What if I can do things now to not only extend that, but to slow my aging process, stop my aging process, and maybe even reverse some of the conditions that I've got. So uh, it's all out there. You know, and I, I, I think, I th I think we, we can live, very, there are people walking on this planet right now yeah. that believe we can live 300, 600 years. To me, when I researched you and your company, to me, you have mastered the art of asking questions. I mean, primarily the why, but also like you say, the sibling inquiry, why not? Right. Which is just as important. I mean, have questions led you places that you never expected as you look back now far beyond the simple question that you started with which was how do i keep my father safe and how do i make sure that he dies at home which was his wish sure i mean uh, everything that i talk about is the result of somebody asking me a question i didn't know the answer to <laughs> i believe that it really it's really true it is. you know i i have high blood pressure what can i do naturally to lower my my high, I don't know, but let me see what I can find out. And I'll find an expert in that area. And, and I'll look for technologies in that area. I have skin problems, skin conditions. You know, I, I don't like putting chemicals on my body. How, how do I maintain my hygiene naturally? Uh, just anything at all that you can think of. And I love looking into the future. And I love the fact that we have so many people way smarter than me that are working on all these cutting edge technologies and I, I tell the joke, my dad, my dad was like an old Volvo. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, we, we changed the parts out 
and he just keeps running, right? He just keeps going. He made it to 102. I don't know. Maybe that's a million miles in, in, yeah. in Volvo language. I don't know. But, you know, his upholstery was saggy and torn. His exhaust pipe was resting out. Mm -hmm. his, his exhaust fumes were toxic. You know, his, his gear shift was stuck in neutral. But he was still fun to drive, right? Yeah. And, and my dad went through. He had oral cancer. We had removed part of his tongue, made it past that. When he's 99 years old, he had a stenosis of the aortic valve. Thought that was it, right? We found a technique and a procedure, non-invasive. They stuck a horse's heart in there and he boom, just revitalized him. He wow. made it three more years. Uh, but those are signs and indications of, of technology that are currently available. Yes. They're in the marketplace. So that's the why. And that's, that's where we as individuals, each one of the baby boomers and our parents, yeah. we've got to lift the hand, get on, and that's what I love about the internet. I there's more knowledge and information available on the internet right now oh, it's amazing. than ever before. You can do anything. You can learn anything you want. So research for yourself. Find out why is this doctor prescribing this? You know, what's it going to do to me? I had a kidney stone a few years ago, and the urologist wanted to do a surgery. And I'm like, mm, let me let me, oh, that's simple, you'll be in and out. Well, let me tell you something. Eight out of 10 people who had that procedure had problems. Eight out of 10 people, they put a stent in. Eight out of 10 people had inf uh, infections because of that. Eight out of 10 people who don't have the procedure pass the stone naturally. And I'm going, okay, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but, but I'm not a hammer. I, I want to do it naturally. So I told the urologist, look, I don't want to have the surgery. It's not worth the risk to me. What should I do? And he said, drink a lot of beer. And I'm like, I'm your guy. I can do that. <laughs> and three days later, I passed it naturally. Mm -hmm. Now, I, that's just a simple example of I could have stopped that process. Phyllis Bennett, my very first customer for, for Bentley Baths, the walk-in tubs, came to me after a talk. And I was talking about these walk-in bathtubs and be yeah. careful. There's a lot of you know, high pressure and, yeah. and they're still there, right? Name brand companies selling these tubs through like aluminum siding, right? And she said, I, I, I had back surgery. I was in a wheelchair. I'm headed to another surgery. You know, do you know of anything that could help me? And I immediately thought of the medical hydrotherapy, right? And so she got a tub. She started using the medical hydrotherapy, which is temperature appropriate, sanitary, mm -hmm. non-aggressive, whole body massage. She was able to give her body a natural care. And guess what? She still hasn't had the second back surgery. Wow. And it's been almost 20 years. She's getting to where she's headed back. She's going to have to do something. But talk about that AB game. She extended that for almost 20 years. It's a long time. Naturally. I mean, like I say, be it a, a few years or quite a few years. I mean, you, you've always provided truly tangible solutions not just theories, but a plan of action, prevention. Um, investing in technology to secure our future as we age, is that something that is important to you, whether it be the products of Bentley Baths or, like you say, and just the wealth of information and knowledge that we have out there, really investing in, uh, yeah. in that technology. Just, and it's not, it's not all about me. It may be connecting people with other resources, networking. Here, look at this, try this. Here's, here, they're doing this you know, with knees. My gosh, there's so many technologies coming out around knee injuries and knee problems and degenerate, and that's going to continue to grow. So what I did was I thought, how am I going to educate my father about all this, right? In his nine, born in 1919. Yeah. My father did not graduate college. He went for about a year, and he was the first member of his family to ever darken a college classroom, okay? Yeah. He didn't graduate, but, you know, he's kind of a straightforward, simple guy, right? And that's why I call it kiss and tell. Keep yeah. it simple and share it with other people. So I said, all right, this is pro-aging. All of this knowledge, in it, it's overwhelming. Uh, where do I even start? I could fill this room with all the texts about all these different conditions sure. and things that we need to be doing. So how do I dumb it down? So I dumbed it down to five things. And, and I can put everything in one of these five buckets. Hmm. Number one is always grow. Always be growing. I talk about uh, growing young, not growing old. But I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm giving, I'm contributing, yeah. I'm talking to friends, I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning a new skill. Right. You asked me once, you know, 
why do I do this? You know, I don't have to do this. I do it because I love it. It keeps me active. It keeps my brain going. Very important. Give back to society. Help other people out. We see when we have crisis, whether it's fires, COVID, whatever it is, human nature is to help other people out. So number one is always be growing, be, be giving, be charitable in your life. Two is eat right. Now, under eat right, that's where I put anything that we do to our body. So uh, pharmaceuticals would go. I put pharmaceuticals in my body. That's not eating right. Healthy food. I can, I can sum up nutrition yeah. real easy. Okay. It's eat two and a half cups of fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Other than that, it's staying away from the garbage and the toxic fuel that we have yeah, out there yeah. that we're putting in our body. Water is very simple. You know, I gave you some water a little bit. That's yeah. filtered water. KDF yeah. filter in your refrigerator, whatever. It'll get rid of, it's not perfect, but it'll get yeah. rid There are contaminants in our drinking water. Sure. Right now in Denver, they're replacing all the water lines because they're filled with lead. And we don't even, we don't even talk about it. So anything that I can do, control going into my body, I can, right. I can proactively decide, do I want to eat that McDonald's hamburger? Or would I have, rather have some raw broccoli? Now, I'm going to lean towards the burger, but not very <laughs> But I can take things out. Right. It's easy. I can, I can keep it simple. I can take things out. Um, so I've got grow, eat right, exercise. Exercise is anything. And that, so medical yeah. hydrotherapy, right? It stimulates the lymphatic system. It gives our body the benefit of exercise without me physically having to do right. it. But do whatever I've got to do to keep moving my body. I've, I've got programs for like stretching uh, for seniors, uh, stroke victims. There's all, it does not have to be complicated. And I'm telling you right now, in seven minutes a day, mm. we can age and keep ourselves healthy. If you'll figure out how you can squat and stand up 19 times, you'll never be a fall victim you'll always be able to get back up. It's very simple. So I just stand at my kitchen sink and I try to go as many times as I can. And I try to get to where I can do that without holding on. Once I get to that, I've, I've got about 80% of my stability rest of life. I'll probably not rely on a walker. I'll probably be independent. Interesting. Important, but simple. A simple little thing. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. I, 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 can, I can do it. There's seven minute workout programs. You know, again, the internet. So eat right, exercise, um, uh, avoid injury. Uh, we, we, I use the Volvo metaphor for my dad. We are organic yes. automobiles, if you will. We are internal combustion engines. I mean, like, why is our body temperature 98.6 degrees? Have you ever thought about that? No. That's the temperature at which our cells burn fuel. As we evolved, our body, as, as an organism, we reached the point where, ah, that's the temperature where we can fight off infection, we can deal with virus. We have, a, as, a, as a species, we have a better survival rate, and our cells burn fuel at 98.6 degrees, not unlike my car. If I, my car burns fuel, it heats, I have to have a radiator, a cooling system to keep it cooled down. But Every time I crash my car, I injure myself, it becomes harder. I can't just grow another fender, right? I can't slap on a, a right. buy a new one and slap it on. But we're getting close to that, right? With robotics and everything that's going on, we'll get to the point where I can have a mechanical hand if I need it. But don't injure yourself in the first place. So be proactive about being safe. Make your home safe first. Make your bathroom. Take care of your stairs. And then pay attention when you're out in the environment. So. Contribute, grow, eat right, exercise. Oh, uh, did I get exercise? Yes. Avoid injury. Yeah. Avoid so, injury. what do you think number five is? No idea. It sounds like those right there alone would probably. <laughs> well, for, I, I added. I added. Keep growing. My dad said, George, you know, at 90, 90 he's going. Why am I still going? I said, you're still going because you're still growing. You know, you're learning and you're doing things. So I have this concept of, you know. Think and grow old, drink, or think and grow young. Sorry, <laughs> we always talk about growing old. We can grow young, right? So number five is uh, reduce stress. Stress is the number one killer. When we evolved, Should however we, we evolved, right? Yep. Our brains, the amygdala is the core of our, that's our primitive brain. That's where the fight or flight central processing is, right? And our brains evolved with the idea that I would have a stimulation, I'm hungry, 
oh, now I got to go out and hunt and forage for days to find food to drag some, you know, bison back to the family or whatever it is. A little bit of stimulation and, and a huge response. Right, I'm cold. Oh, I got to build this house from scratch, a hut, you know, yeah. to keep me in fire. I've got to keep the all these things. A little bit of stimulation, huge response. What we've done, we've evolved to the point that we've turned that completely Baz Ackerts, where we have huge stimulation, constant. I mean, my God, when I was growing up, Gary, <laughs> I got in trouble because my mom. You could hear the whole, all the mothers in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Going to the door, George, get in, it's dinner time. George, it's getting dark, get back in the house. Come on inside. All of, all of my friends, we were like that, right? Now, I'm yelling at my kids, get out of the house, <laughs> get off of the phone, get out and do something, yeah, right? Gosh. Get out in nature. And we, we have all of this synthetic and real stimulation, whether it's road rage and traffic yeah. and uh, the negative news, why is the news yeah. so negative? because that's what we respond to. It's a survival instinct. When we were on the savannas and we were evolving, if, if I got good news, you know, yeah, it was no big deal. What, oh, there's a great berry bush over there. Yeah, all right, fine, I'll get another one. Well, no big deal. But if I miss out on negative news, there's a saber-toothed tiger in the bush, and I don't get that news, guess what? I'm out of the gene pool, right? Yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. And so that's why news and media is so negative. It's, that's what we yeah. crave. That's what we want. I can't stand it. I, I mean, I watch the news every now and then, but I'm like, eh, I, I can't do that. You don't really, you really don't need to. You won't, you won't miss a lot without it. When so, I started consumer news, basically the bottom line was that I wanted to be able to share stories yep. that basically would empower people. Yep. Uh, basically they would walk away and they'd be educated from. I mean, when you're talking about pro-aging technologies versus that of anti-aging technologies, I mean, all of us are four times likely, like you say, to live to be 100, possibly. Yep. Yep. I mean, if we just took some small steps and went forward. Do you know what, you know, real quick, because this is kind of important. Uh, the number one thing to do for stress reduction is, if I said this to you, um, blank is the best medicine, what would you say? Blank is the best medicine. It's an old saying. Maybe you're not as old as I am. <laughs> no. Laughter is the best medicine. What is it? Laughter. Laughter, Laughter is, is the, the best, best medicine. Okay. Gotcha. And I gotcha. didn't mean to put you on the spot, but my point is humor and laughter is the number one way for us to reduce our stress. Absolutely. You can meditate, and I'm all over all those things. And again, the internet, my God, just go to YouTube and put in evening, med whatever. You can do, there's just all kinds of tools out there. But if I can make other people laugh, and I can laugh myself, I'd, I, you cannot be negative while you're laughing. It's impossible. And do you know that, that institutions like the Mayo Clinic and, and there are others around the world, they're treating cancer with laughter therapy. And statistically, it's, it's looking like the numbers run about the same. Yeah. The laughter therapy is just as efficacy as chemo and, and wow. surgeries, right? But again, laughter, and imagine what that does for the other people around you, right? It makes life, my dad and I entered into a pact. He was 92, I guess. Well, it was after he went, went through the tongue thing, right? We thought we were gonna yeah. lose him then. And we made a pact, and that pact was we wouldn't let our feet hit the floor in the morning to start our day without saying this is gonna be the best day of my life and mean it. I did that this morning. I do it every morning. We wouldn't let our feet leave the floor to go to bed at night without having made at least one other person laugh or had a good belly laugh myself, you know? And I joke, my, every now and then my dad would call 7.30, hey, did you hear the one about? You know, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, dad, I'm laughing at you. You can go to bed. But that just changed my dad's whole, he was very popular, right? Get a joke book, anything, anything to lighten things up. It's the best thing you could ever do. A lot of, lot of power in those old scenes, obviously. Yeah. Even though they were saying, uh, um, there's a lot of truth to them as well. I mean, when I look at the pro-aging technologies, um, is this something that the baby boomers are starting to kind of stand up and take notice to? Are they understanding that um, right around the corner is maybe a whole different chapter for them? And is this something that you want to kind of empower them? make them feel like maybe they're not alone. Well, you, not only yourself, but you, your inner circle, and, uh, and helping educate them in that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. This is the kind of virus we want to spread. This is, it has a, a viral character to it in a positive way. And that is I, I become infected with pursuit of knowledge and happiness. It's really about pursuit of happiness. My mother used to raise me saying this, that knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me at one point that, you know what, the opposite is true. Lack of knowledge is lack of power. Right. And I think at least it's my goal and my vision that every day these 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 years old, there's going to be a significant percentage of them that are going, hmm, what do I need to be learning and thinking about for the rest of my life? What knowledge and information do I need to be focusing on? And I, I think this is going to continue to grow. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm the only one. The great thing about what I'm doing, though, is it's going to continue to grow until I die. Right, because I'm a baby boomer. Right? Yep, so, right. like, so I've got my life plan right there. <laughs> you, you began this whole being young at any age back in 2018. Really, uh, you started putting it together as we navigated through 2020. Each one of us found out how unique each one of us is, and we're all not the same, especially medically. Uh, do you be? Do you think 2020 maybe was the beginning of personalized medicine? Well, you're really going to start seeing more of that. Well, it wasn't the beginning. It started before that. I mean, it's been around for a while, but it's getting traction. Yeah. We're, and that, again, that's because new technologies are coming into the marketplace. It's wearable technology, nanotechnology. Uh, it's not too far down the road that, you know, you'll, you'll go to the bathroom in the morning and your toilet will go, your iron's a little low, you're, you're a little high on this, you need to that kind of tech. Well, think about uh, autonomous cars. Right around, I told my dad, I said, Dad, you just need to make it to 107 and you won't have to worry about not driving anymore. And he's like, why? I said, we're going to have self-driving cars. You and I, as we get older, aren't going to have that problem of having to give our keys up because we'll have a technology that allows us to do that. that I, I really believe that. That is exciting. I mean, your journey began for you really after an event in your mother's life. Um, from that starting seed, you really have created a revolution in your own life. You say that if you're able to help just one person out there to have a safer and better life, a better quality of life, your mom would be proud. At the end of the day, is, is that what it is for you? Making sure that you're touching at least one life. Yeah. And you know what? It doesn't, I don't, our company motto is save a million lives and we do that one at a time, but it really is a function of, well, I mean, Christianity. What, what, what one, one perfect master, leader, whatever, and 12 yeah. followers can do. Uh, network marketing. I tell this joke, you know, I did the walk-in bathtub business, right? Phyllis Bennett, I think I mentioned yeah. her, my very first customer. I placed a tub with a, with a, a lady uh, two or three months ago and, and we always ask, how did you hear about us? Oh, I heard about you from Laura Hadlow. Oh, well, Laura Hadlow heard about us from mm -hmm. Nancy Smith. Nancy Smith heard us from da-da-da. And, and I could trace it back to Phyllis Bennett. I could go, Phyllis Bennett referred Vera Ellis. Vera Ellis referred Laura Hadlow. Laura Hadlow, you follow me? It's like network marketing. Genealogy that just goes all the way That's down. right. I, I said, you're on Phyllis Bennett's right leg. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't even know if network marketing is still around or not. But the idea of, of spreading information, knowledge, technology, products, services, whatever it is, through word of mouth, that truly is the best advertising. And the best thing anybody can do for me is try something, do something, and then talk about it. And that's why the kiss and tell. Keep it simple, do something, and then share it with other people that you love and care about. Share it with somebody else who has the same problem or yep. same issue. I'm excited to see you going into the area that I've been in for 10 years, which is utilizing technology to educate people and empower them. I mean, people think that what I do is about marketing, but really at the end of the day, it's about leaving a story, telling your story and basically something that's going to outlive me is what I used to say, but I don't know. Now that I've talked to you more, <laughs> I might have quite a few more years <laughs> left in me. You got a lot <laughs> left in you, buddy. <laughs> Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. And what you're going to see is his website. Once again, that's being young at any age. Um, check out the website. You're going to see their mission, first of all, which has really been 
uh, a revolution evolving throughout the years. Um, we're going to have a radio show coming up. Some video vlogs will be coming at you as well. Um, he has really met with many great speakers throughout time. Um, if, if you've looked at everything and checked out the research and you're still not sure, there's a button right at the top and you can ask George. Yep. I mean, really, he has asked every question out there. And then tomorrow he's going to find a new question. Well, I don't know. I may, I may hear another one tomorrow. That I, I was going to say, <laughs> tomorrow you're going to find always question coming question out with and, <laughs> and see what it is. Viewers, once again, take a look there. Uh, we hope you check out the, the website as well as the blog and the podcast. That is Being Young at Any Age. Join the individual, personal revolution. A revolution for evolution. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.